How would $12,500 affect your life right now? I could help my mom. We've been struggling a bit but if I got that money and gave it to her she'd be much less stressed. I'd do the same. My mom is getting kicked out of her house at the end of the month, and she's been so stressed trying to find a new place. It breaks my heart to see her so scared. I'd give her that money to go towards a new place. My mom is a factory worker, and because of COVID they've been slicing her hours, so I never told her, but I took the year off from school to help her with the bills. I know her, and I know that because of the way she raised me, she'd be mad if she found out I didn't go to school just to help her. Because I would be too. Honestly $12,000 plus the money I've been saving would pay off the rest of her car and the house. So yeah, I can agree. Seeing your mom with a peace of mind would honestly be worth it. You're a good kid. Dental work I've been putting off for 8 years. Had two cracked and broken teeth from an accident that I just can't afford to fix. Truly wish dental health wasn't considered a luxury. Well, I know regular health is too but a little lesser than dental. I hope that you are able to get them fixed. FR, people died rather often of dental issues in, before? The 1800s. Pretty sure dental issues have been a significant cause of death for humans and previous evolutionary versions of humans for forever. Ain't that the tooth? All animals with teeth, really. Evolution makes it so we reproduce, raise the kids until they're ready to reproduce, then we die. It never figured retirement into its equation. Right? Silly evolution. It's crazy how in the US they separate dental and medical bills and insurance as if they're not related. Every year my dentist goes to this workshop and they have tons of dentists volunteer. They set up in a warehouse and do free work all day. You'll probably have to wait around all day or even multiple days, but you should see if something like this happens near you. This. Medications have destroyed my teeth before my adult teeth even came in. All my molars grew in with massive cavities. Fillings would fall out when I was a kid. Have had to have many pulled. They're a mess. Last time I went to the dentist, like at least a decade ago, I cried when I saw the HD pics. I'm used to x-rays, but those pics. I pre-rinse, brush, floss, and Listerine twice a day, but you'd think I ate rocks like candy. I have half a top molar to chew with. If I ever have the money, I'm sure I'd have a full set of implants. Thankfully, all my front teeth are still hanging in. My doctor yelled at me because I haven't had my colonoscopy in a few years. Because I have UC, that's important, but I've had to do major dental surgery the past few years that spends any extra money I have. First I got a crown. That didn't work so had to get a root canal, that didn't work so they pulled the crown and the tooth behind it and set up for implants. F, I'm so sick of it. With universal health care, you get that colonoscopy that catches colon cancer early so you don't get full-blown colon cancer later, both much more expensive to treat, and life-threatening. If they do nothing else with UHC, they should have free annual physicals and routine screenings. That alone would save both lives and money. I'm in the process of getting one implant. I have really good dental coverage, it's going to be about $5,000 out of pocket. And that's using two years worth of implant benefits. Jesus dude. One implant for me is $1,500. Have you thought of crossing the border into Mexico? If you find a reputable dentist it can be the same quality and much cheaper. Costa Rica was way cheaper than the States and I had good results. It's not super expensive to fly down and stay a night in San Jose, get it done, and fly home. I second this. I was quoted $10,000 of dental work in the US and got it done for $1,400 in Costa Rica and the experience was like going to a spa. They were better than any US dentist I've seen and my dental insurance even covered a portion. Flights to Costa Rica on JetBlue are extremely cheap. Edit to add, the dentist is Mesa Dental. Might you recommend the dentist you saw? Dr. Toothaker. Thanks, I'll make an appointment for Tooth Hurdy. Do some research though, a friend of a friend is a dentist and says you see some wildly varying quality in Mexican dentistry, from absolute disasters that cost more than the initial fix and leave damage, to top quality work. Check with a local dental school. 
they do great work for a fraction of the cost. Seeing as I got laid off yesterday, it would be pretty big. Best Buy? Yeah. My fiancé was yesterday too, it hurts. I'm very sorry. What happened with Best Buy yesterday? They laid off pretty much most of their full-time staff in stores or promoted them to part-time. Did they give a reason for this? That sounds horrible. I can't even imagine how many people that affects across the nation. Quite a few. They said officially shopping habits changed during COVID, but to be honest it was coming regardless of COVID with the new CEO. COVID made it happen faster. They're trying to keep it quiet to avoid the bad PR with the way they rolled it out. Real talk, I try to use brick and mortar stores when I can to keep local population employed and keep the money local and the local economy running, have Best Buy's behaviors changed in such a way that I should take them off my list and use an online company, like Newegg, instead? This isn't about getting the best price, it's about getting the money into the hands of the local population, to help hourly workers. Use an online company, like Newegg, instead? Somebody should correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Newegg got bought and destroyed its own customer service department. Yeah, Newegg is not a good place to shop right now. Agreed. All Newegg is good for nowadays is searching for items due to their search filter system. Avoid at all costs otherwise. You are correct. Use Fry's or Micro Center if possible. Both great shops. Fry's has filed bankruptcy I think. They closed all of their stores in San Diego County. They do t have to give a reason because it's obvious, no full-time benefits and no salaries to pay when stores are slow. It's the standard retail model. It shouldn't be surprising to anyone. What is surprising is that they had full-time store employees to begin with. I remember when I worked for a big tire distribution company. When Obama passed that bill that forced companies to pay overtime to managers who work more than 40 hours per week, instead of letting companies get away with putting them on salary and exploit their hours, like has been going on for many years in many industries. Our district manager came down like three days later and sat in with our assistant manager and when she left he told me that they had a new job offer for him, the title was going to be executive supervisor. Somehow they worked it around the law to keep him on salary and not pay overtime. I think they gave him like a $2 hour raise but that's not anything g close to what he'd have made with overtime. Also I'd like to note that he didn't have a choice in the matter, his current job was being dissolved and if he hadn't taken that new job he would have been laid off essentially. Got to love that. Hey Jim. Do you want to do this new job? Before you answer, your current job is being dissolved. How the F did they spin that into a promotion? You don't have to work as much. Yeah, upside down face. Common corporate bullcrap. I've seen a number of bosses jokingly say, I didn't fire anyone, and I promoted them to customers. It's part-time or unemployed. So we can promote you from unemployed to part-time. Or you can. Have no income. I hear you there, you're just at the beginning of the journey. I lost my job back in April. I am a single full-time dad with a very very autistic 5-year-old little boy who doesn't understand any of this. The kicker? We live in Maine Lowell, not an easy life at all. COVID had put us through absolute hell. Put it this way, if I didn't have this little boy, and if it wasn't just me, I would have quit a long time ago but I can't. It's up to me to get us through it. I'm all he has, and he is all I have. I am not allowed to let go of my ambition, I am not allowed to throw in the towel. I have no choice but to dig deep, and find that strength you almost never knew you had and keep us moving forward. Our saving grace, I made a last minute decision back when we were losing our home. I saw that we could pay one, maybe two more months but then nothing and be forced out, or I could take that money and buy a motorhome. The world was closed up, there wasn't another job to just find. Crap they were talking about 14 days for a few months here. I did what I thought was the smart move and bought the motorhome. And I'm glad I did because if I didn't, we would be in a shelter surrounded by drug addicts. I have nothing against those type of people, but I don't want my kid being around it, seeing it, living around it. Always worried if our stuff will vanish, no privacy. No routine. He needs routine. 
This way we have a place to call home and if we have to, we will move our familiar home to wherever we have to and still have that safe, warm place we know, that same bed, our TV, our electronics, our stove, our fridge, our shower, the stuff we know to be ours and our safe haven. I say this stuff because if you happen to read this, look at your choices ahead. Think about months down the road and where you will be and use the choices you have now to have you where it's best for you down the road in the event you don't find another job soon enough. Pay off my school debt. My student loan debt remaining is exactly my 401k. It is so tempting to just take that and wipe the debt out. Do not do that. You would owe tax on your early 401k withdrawal. Long term keep the money there and keep paying the debt down every month just a little bit more. You would owe not only ordinary income tax, but also a 10% penalty on top of that. Don't do that. Source, Financial Planner. Not only that but the potential compounding interest which is tax-free may come to $100,000, plus, or more. Listen to this guy. Traditional 401k is tax-deferred, not tax-free. If they're federal loans, the current pause on federal student loans, as well as the potential for a $10,000 reduction in federal student loan obligations, should both be enough to reconsider that. This pause has been fantastic for my wife. COVID didn't affect either of our jobs so we kept making the normal payment. 100% of the payments go toward the principal so the debt is dropping fast. If 10K gets forgiven on top of Biden extending no interest until September we will have taken about 6 or so years off the repayment time. I've been doing the same. Work from home since March, the interest freeze has been letting me smash my loans. All principal, I'm even close to paying a couple of them off early. Fiancé is doing something similar but instead of making a payment to Navi and she is throwing the money into an ally savings account. This way she makes an extra $20 plus, dollars a month in interest so she will be able to make an extra couple hundred dollars in principal payments come September. If you cash out your 401k, it will not be exactly the same amount as your student loans because you will need to pay taxes on it and a penalty fee for cashing out early. Don't do it ma'am. You'll thank yourself in old age. Debt paid off and the rest into savings. Not life changing but helpful. The feeling of being debt-free, if you've been loaded with it for a substantial amount of time, is nothing to sneeze at. Think about the amount of stress that relieves and the health benefits of that itself. I've got things set up to where I'm going to have debt that I've had for at least 15 years paid off in about a month and the it feels like a literal weight off my chest BC I can actually work on my savings slash safety net to the point that an unexpected disaster won't set me back further. I'd say that's life-changing. Maybe not bringing you out of the farm and into the penthouse changing, but still puts you in a better place. Seriously. Paying debt off feels so liberating. I accumulated about $5,000 of credit card debt due to a string of unfortunate circumstances. Recently I was able to pay that off and the feeling of seeing zero dollars balance across my cards was such a freeing feeling. Told myself I'd never get back into debt if I can help it. Now I'm trying to tackle my student loan so that's where I'd put the $12,500. I'd say that's life changing. Maybe not bringing you out of the farm and into the penthouse changing, but still puts you in a better place. I think ops response, and a lot of responses in this thread like it come from people with modest savings and some levels of debt that are manageable within their budget. For these people it's an extra $200 to $300 a month which isn't incredibly life changing for them at that specific moment in life. Not that they're ungrateful for it, just that it wouldn't have as huge of an impact as it would for some other people. Also, even though I have debt, I'm not really stressed about it. I have a job right now, and I have a plan for tackling the debt, but I'm not obsessing over it. I own my car, and I have about 7k in debt from when I was out of work for a while, and then about 20k in student loans. $12,500 would pay off all the short-term debt, sure and allow me to pay some of the long-term debt, but again, I have a plan for managing these and it's going fine, so I'm not exactly super stressed about it. If it was, say, $50,000 that might be more life-changing. I could pay off all my debt, and then put the rest into savings so that I would have money to pay bills and such for 6 months to a year if I ever was out of work again. Not having to worry as much about if my contract will get renewed, 
or worry about finding a job within two months if it didn't, would be a far bigger change for me. Definitely agree here. I went from having a six-month emergency fund set up with mutual funds on the side to 40k in the hole. The stress is intense, worrying about every little expense and wondering if this week will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. I remember what it felt like to be debt-free and it's exactly how you say. I just hope I can claw my way back out. I have been on a debt-free journey for exactly a year, started with five payments of things to get unloaded, down to two, and very close to one left. The feeling of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel is amazing, been doing the snowball method and found that to be helpful. Being debt-free would be life-changing. It would pay off the debt for my mom's illness slash death and make finding a new job easier. If I failed, it wouldn't be the end of the world. As it is now, with my husband just finally working after being unemployed it's easier to stay in a soul-crushing job that I know they are just too lazy to let me go and barely make bills each month. Same boat. I would pay off all my credit cards and at 36 actually be able to start saving for a house. Would be nice. Seriously? Even $2,000 would give me a hell of a lot of peace of mind. $12,500 would be borderline life-changing. 12K is enough to allow a lot of people to leave bad relationships. You know, I never looked at it that way. You have a big point there. An overlooked reason for free college? One less than controlling parents can use as leverage. Same with free cell phones. Same idea with universal healthcare. If healthcare is taken care of imagine how many people will feel safe to either job hob, start a business, leave a toxic job, or just retire. Behind all these conversations about money is the reason you even need that money. I just feel like every dollar I make already belongs to someone else. Yeah, I feel that in my bones. I feel like the next $50,000 I make, at $14k slash year, has already been spoken for and I'm having to negotiate just to be able to eat. Because that's my debt and my annual income at the moment. Edit, okay, this blew up a little more than I expected. Big thank yous to everyone who has reached out to me. Seriously, faith in humanity restored. But I quite like my little simple life I have set up, I have everything I need and slightly more. I just feel like every once in a while it's good to hear a different perspective. If you're offering to send me money, Think of someone in your life who might be in my situation and reach out to them instead. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.